Guten Tag, Liebchens. It's Lisa Young Sutton with another video. And today's video um, was a last minute um, thing. I just decided to do it about an hour ago. And, um, but it's because uh, somebody asked a question in Facebook and it was a new reader and she wanted to know if she could start with three cards. And um, that's the way I start all my students. And you have to remember that I teach non-card readers to read cards. My last group were uh, just people who wanted to uh, get in touch with their intuition. They are non-card readers, non, I don't want to call them non-spiritual, but you know, they have no divination background at all, that kind of thing. And um, you know, it, it's, it's fantastic because they're blank slates, they have no, uh, nobody whispering in their ears saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, <laughs> And um, so they're just totally open, you know, and they just suck everything up like little sponges. But um, they're brilliant with the cards. They are just absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, you know, it, the, the, the method, anything I bring to you, I know works. So here it is. Okay, now I'm going to show you what all of this stuff is, especially these cards over here. You're probably like, oh, my God, what are those? That's something I need. I have to buy that, you know, and I will show you all of this, but let me start. Um, the first one, I'm going to do a live draw, um, but all of these cards I just drew moments ago. I, I was just getting organized for the video because my short videos are my most popular videos. <laughs> Let's face it, we all have very short attention spans, don't we? So anyway, um, in order to keep this really short, I, I, I just drew these, but they were not thought out or pre-selected in any way. Like I just did them as I'm going to show you how to do them now, you know what I mean? Um, but this one I'll do live. So let me cover these up so you don't get distracted. Or so I don't get distracted. I don't know. Maybe all of you are less distractible than I am, but focus focus is the, is the name of the game really you know what in card reading focus is the name of the game I don't care how good you are at focusing um, you still need to practice it <sighs> practice makes perfect okay so obviously the first theme is travel now wh oh what is this mo uh, this movie <laughs> yes, I'm making movies I'm a movie star all right but now what is this video <laughs> about it is uh, about all of the ways that I start my students using three cards, okay? And this is like, you know, lesson one, basically. So I'm going to show you, uh, I think there's five different methods here that I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first deck is the Mandnacht. I have um, two of the decks I'm using are German. That's why I, that's why I said Guten Tag, Liebschens. Anyway, okay, so the theme is travel. So what do we do? So, so I tell my students, okay, the first question is going to be how is the weather going to be on my weekend trip? Now that is not a narrative, it is a descriptive, which means the, the, we're not, the cards are not going to be read from left to right. Um, the center card we're placing there, so we're not even really reading it. It's just a focal point. The other two cards are going to describe the weather. They will carry equal weight. It's not that the right card is uh, carrying more weight than the left because we're reading right to left. That's not what we're doing. This is descriptive, okay? So I tell my students, okay, this is a question about travel. Your travel card is the ship. Take the ship out. Oh, here I can zoom, right? Take the ship out and hold it in your hands and focus on it and imagine this is your weekend trip and you and keep thinking, I wanna know how the weather will be on my weekend trip. It does not matter if you're not going near the water or on a boat or anything else. This is your travel card, okay? And for you Lenormand teachers, um, this is a great way to start your students. Give them something to focus on. It, that's so important. Rather than just tell them to pull two cards and figure out what they mean. You know, uh, having that, that card that center card to focus on really helps them. All right, so they're putting their energy into this card and then they're just gonna lay it down. All right, this is my weekend trip. I wanna know how the weather will be, okay? Then they're shuffling, shuffling, and you have to keep them focusing. You can tell them while you're shuffling, keep staring at that card and keep thinking about what will the weather be on my weekend trip? Oops, sorry. What will the weather be on my weekend trip? 
Okay, and I'm shuffling, shuffling, and I am drop. Oop, I'm dropping cards all over the place. Okay, so you know what? Let me just. This thing is getting in my way. I think I'm sitting in the wrong spot. This thing that's holding my camera. Anyway, I'm just gonna pull a couple cards here. Oh. All right. Oh, good. Okay. You know what? Oh, of course. You know, I'm not even noticing. The first card is one of the weather cards, of course. But don't expect your card. <laughs> Come on, cards. Don't expect your cards to be weather cards. I mean, what are our weather cards, really? You know, we have the sun and the, the clouds. But um, all of the 36 cards will pertain to your question in some way. Now, here's where my book comes in. All right? Here's my book. Okay, the Petite Lenormand Oracle, yada, 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 Lisa Young Sutton, that's me. Okay, now go to your card description pages, all right? And you will see that there is a descriptive words section. That is primarily um, describing people and animals. Um, so you will find more descriptive words in the broader concept section. Um, you'll you'll get ideas in the basic concept section. You'll get you know look at your what the hell read the whole thing. <laughs> Base keywords yeah just read the whole thing. Oh I want to keep this open because this is I'm gonna point something out for the next one or an upcoming one. Okay anyway so how will this um, describe your weather? Well obviously it's going to be sunny. It's going to be lovely. Okay this is not just sun but this is. Um, you know, success and, and, and warmth and happiness, and this is like all good things, right? It's the victory card. It's, you know, so it's gonna be good weather. Now, what does the birds mean in relation to weather? Think about your meaning of your birds card. It's temporary upsets, right? Think about birds when they get upset and they all scatter and then they settle just as quickly, right? So, I mean, if you had the clouds here, it would be a mixed bag, right? It would be like, well, it's going to be partly sunny and it's going to be partly cloudy. There's going to be sun, there's going to be rain. But that's not what this is saying. This is saying that there's going to be sudden little bursts of, of like upsetting weather, right? Like scattered little storms that will pop up and disappear just as quickly, okay? But for the most part, it's going to be lovely weather, okay? Now, the second way and this is my students favorite way um, of doing this hang on let's get to the next one the next theme is friendship I always think of that Cole Porter song friendship friendship anyway okay just a lovely friendship okay so now this, this again is still the Mondnacht, Lenormand. I love the dog card. Look at that, it's a Landseer Nufi. Um, anyway, okay, now in this, in this case, same thing, I tell the students, take out the friendship card because that's your theme is friendship. So take out your friendship card, which is 18, the dog, and focus on it, put your energy into it. Okay, now the question for this is for Ailish. Ailish, that's my Irish name. Ailish wants to know how her lunch date with her estranged, estranged friend, Cloda, will go. All right, so we're looking at this card, we're focusing on it, and this card is now Cloda, or we could say it's now the lunch date with Cloda. Okay, so you have your your um, students, or if this is, if you are the student, okay, you're putting your energy into this, you're focusing on it, right? But then you put it back in the deck. Okay, I don't wanna lose it, so I'm not going to. All right, so you put it back in the deck and you're shuffling, shuffling. The whole time you're shuffling, you're thinking of that card. You're imagining it, right? It's not so hard because you were just staring at it. You can still see it, and if you close your eyes, you'll still see it. All right, so you're, you're focusing on number 18 and you're saying to yourself, how will my lunch date with my estranged friend Clodo go? And you're telling the cards that you're gonna search for that 18 and you're gonna take the card on either side. Now I know I have this in some other video somewhere, but if I can't find it, I can't expect you to. So, so I thought I would just make a whole nother video. All right, so then you turn the deck over and you look for it. Okay, oh look, there it is, all right. And you take the card, well here, I'll pretend. You take the card on either side, all right? And remember, if, if the card lands here, 
You have one card on this side. Well, what's the other side? The last card would be the other side, okay? All right, so that's how we do that, okay? But generally, you get a card on either side. All right, so we take it out. We take the card on either side, and these are the, you know what? I, I had them, they were this way when I found them. Okay, so, yep, I remember they were that way. All right, so those are the cards I got when I asked this question. So now what is this saying? Okay, this was the, the first card I looked at, and I was like, oh, God, it's all going to be great and flowery and beautiful. And, and, but then I got this card, okay? Now this is perfect. This is a perfect example of you seeing that the cards portray real life. Real life is not all roses, and real life is not all sides. It's always some combination of the two for the most part. Okay, so how will the um, the lunch date go? Now remember, this again is not a narrative, so we're not going from good to bad. These are both simply describing this lunch date with Cloda. So what can we say about this? Well, for the most part, it's going to be lovely, isn't it? It's going to be pleasant and charming, and maybe even some nice surprises. But something will disrupt the 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 lunch date okay something will suddenly disrupt it in a harsh way okay there there will be something shocking and we can say that it, it's going to separate you now she's already estranged right you haven't seen each other in years okay so um at the end of this lunch date it kind of looks like um you know you're going to figure out that you've just drifted apart, right? <laughs> Goodbye, Cloda, okay, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> yes, even though it's a, it's a mix of good and bad, this, this, pretty, this is the separation card. This is cutting somebody out, right? And this is a negative card. And even though this is a positive card, this um, is saying that, you know, some, something is going to separate the two of you. You're you're pretty much going to see that you two have grown apart. Okay. That's the friendship one. Okay, now. Here. Okay. I can just do it this way now. All right. Now I have my Mogishes, Lenormand. And don't ask where you can get this because I, right now you can't. But that doesn't, well, I mean, for the most part you can't. You can, I'm sure, find a used one somewhere. If you go on those uh, the Facebook groups for card swaps and selling cards and all that, I'm sure somebody has one out there that they would be willing to part with. Um, and, um, you know, if you request, uh, start making requests, maybe they'll print more of these. Okay. All right. So... This is going to be a descriptive reading with a first or center card focus without, without pre-selecting the card. So I drew all three, three of these cards randomly, okay? So my question, I chose this for my theme for the question. Who or what is making uh, this more difficult than it should be, okay? And I thought of, um, I made up Tom. Tom is a boss. Tom owns a business, and he assigned a project to a group of his employees at work, and someone keeps sab sabotaging the plan, and he wants to know who it is, but nobody's fessing up. You know, they all just keep coming to him as, as a collective group and saying, you know, uh, you know, we're having problems with this, that, and the other thing, and, but he, he knows in his gut that it's coming from somebody, so he wants to know who is the fly in the ointment. Right. right. Who's the fly in the ointment? So you're thinking about that while you're shuffling your cards, and then you just draw three random cards, and you lay them down. Okay. And this, again, is a descriptive reading. Now, I chose first card focus. Let me show you how I did that. So when I say you're just um, drawing three random cards, if you wanted center card focus, right, you would pull that card and lay it first. All right, but if you want first card focus, which is what I did here, you, you tell the cards. This is my primary card that's gonna describe who this person is. The other two kind of just add more details, but the primary card, right? That's your focus card. 
I chose first card focus, so you just place it in position one. Okay, these are upside down. All right, so for my focus card, I got bear, and then I got heart, and then I got rider. Okay, so how is this describing, how are these three de uh, cards describing a person? Well, like I said, the first is my focus card, so we know this is somebody. Now, I'm not talking about physical descriptions. I'm not going to say this is a big, fat, hairy person. <laughs> I'm going to say that this is someone who's always in charge, somebody who's a leader, somebody who's assertive with a strong personality. That's what the bear says. Now, the heart, the heart right away tells me it's somebody I'm fond of. I'm pretending I'm Tom here, okay? So, that, so now Tom knows, but this is also somebody he's fond of. Now, this is a good point too, because I got a, a, a core inset here. Whenever I'm asking to describe a person, I always pay attention to my core insets. And I'll tell you what, I almost always get at least one when I'm asking to describe a person. Um, because the cards know I use them. If you don't use them, it doesn't matter. You would still get your answer just from the heart because it's somebody that you're fond of. But what is that, that um, Jack of Hearts saying? That's somebody who's young and somebody that you're, you're probably fond of, right? So there you go. So he's already you know, deciding who this is. And this fits in perfectly with, uh, with the bear for sure, okay? Because the rider is saying that it's, it's um, somebody who's dynamic, right? They're um, you know, young, they're young, and, and they're, they're charming and dynamic and ambitious and outgoing, right? They have a lot of fresh, ideas. Now the writer could also be saying that this is somebody who's um, new to the to the company, right? Somebody who recently wrote into the business, put it that way. Somebody who's visiting, you could see it that way. Like in other words, um, as a boss, we, we typically know, we already have a preconceived idea of who's going to stay and who's not. You know, we can tell like who's somebody who's just stopping by for a while and then they're going to be on their way, you know. So the rider card can also say that. All right, so putting all those three together, uh, Tom, Tom is going to know who it is. All right, he's going to know it's, it's, the one, it's the one who's always seems to be in charge and has all the ideas and is very assertive and outgoing and, and somebody who he is fond of because they're great, you know, taking care of business and that others look it up to them. But you, you probably also have an idea that they're not going to be staying with your little company because they have bigger, they got bigger fish to fry. All right, so that's, um, that's no, no pre-selected card for a descriptive. Now we're gonna get to a narrative, all right? And yes, I, like I said, I will show you what those cards are. Just keep your pants on. Okay. Okay, so our last question is, Ooh, I love this. What are the consequences of fill in the blank? Okay, so what is this? When, when we ask what are the consequences going to be, that's an outcome. Okay, so this is going to be a narrative. Narrative is something that's read left to right. I'm going to show you um, two ways of doing this one too. Um, okay, so what are the consequences of, I just chose my favorite question to ask. What will the consequences B, what will be the consequence of my ditching work today? <laughs> because it's a question I ask a lot, <laughs> okay? So, I randomly drew, this is uh, Pixie's, Pixie's uh, astounding Lenormand, by the way, okay? I love cards that come in a tin because they're nice to carry with you. All right. Um, yeah, a narrative. It's going to be read left to right. I pulled three. Where's the deck here? Here's the deck. So, yeah, you know, I just shuffled, shuffled, shuffled while I was focusing on my question. What will the consequence be if I ditch work today? And I pulled three random cards and I laid them one, two, three. And I got the ship, the stork, and the whip. Okay, so a narrative. The energy is flowing from left to right. We have a positive, a, you know, it's like a neutral positive, and then we have a negative, right? So we're going from good to, the, to, to bad. We're, we're going from good to worse, okay? So good to neutral to bad, we could say. All right, so I see ship, and I think, 
Hmm, am I escaping something or traveling to something? Well, let's read on and see. Okay, so the stork. Now the stork is the card of change. I know modern readers are always trying to make this a purely positive card, but it really isn't. It's It can go either way. The other cards, especially the card following it, is going to tell you whether that change is good or bad. Okay, but all the surrounding cards in a tableau are going to tell you that. So change can be positive or negative on its own. Yes, it does lean toward the positive. It even, <laughs> it even has a little rainbow here. But, um, and certainly if it has just all neutral cards, you could look at it as a positive or, or if it has uh, positive cards, it would be positive. But um, you know, if, it, if it's surrounded by negative cards or enough negative cards, you're gonna know that change is not good in this case, okay? So here we start out, I'm seeking betterment and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to do something foreign from my regular routine of going to work, right? And, um, but you know, here, here's the card of change, all right? And then the, the card following, this is going to tell me what this change in my day will bring. And look what it's bringing. It's bringing the whip. It's bringing... I'm gonna, it's bringing discord, okay? I'm gonna be, you know, end up putting a lot of effort into trying to justify my choice for taking this day off. You know, I'm gonna have to put a lot of repeated effort into, um, you know, trying to make this day successful. It's, it's gonna be an exhausting day. I'm gonna end up beating myself up for having taken off. So would I take off if I drew these three cards? Absolutely not. With this as my final card, I would not. Because even though it starts out and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there, but something changes and then it doesn't end so well. Okay. Now, when I said I'm going to show you a different way, what I'm talking about is there was also another question about uh, directional reading. So, Somebody asked, uh, what's the difference between a narrative and a directional read? Well, those two, you know, aren't, uh, that doesn't really make sense, that, that question, um, because a, a directional read can, can be narrative, can be descriptive, can be whatever. But this is what a, d a directional read means, okay? The directional reader, somebody who is a purely directional reader, follows the gaze of the primary significator card should it appear. Now they can pre-select it and put it in a line, and then, you know, they know that because she is facing left, they they are now reading right to left. They are not reading their narrative left to right anymore. But if she just randomly fell here, we'll put her in place of the stork that's the easiest way to show this if she had fallen there instead of the um instead of the stork well now you're not only reading well i'll just say you're just okay now you're reading right to left i want to keep this simple all right so now the the whip the whip is also a, a directional card for many readers. Well, so is this, but we're not going to get into that because that's that's not that that does not change the direction of a reading. Only the primary significator card does. So, <laughs> so shut up, Lisa, before you mess this up. I want to keep it simple. All right, but the the whip is whipping the lady. Okay, wait, hang on. So, but. Now, basically, now we're reading right to left, so now we're starting out with the bad card, like she was struggling with the decision to take off, right? It's going to start out with some discord and some stress and some beating herself up, but now it ends, where's my pointer? But now it ends well, okay? This is a positive card. If, okay, I am first and foremost a traditional reader. The ship has always been a positive card, okay? So, so now the ship is the final card because um, I am, well, I'm not, but the person who laid this is a directional reader, so now the ship is their final card, and it's a positive card. So it says the consequence of this action, the action of taking off today, the consequence will now be a new adventure and expanded horizons and, and all of that. So now it's positive. That is what a directional reading is. And, oh, yeah, okay, so I wanted to show you that for um, a reading like this uh, about consequences, okay, 
Um, that's really no different than uh, like uh, pros and cons and, and good or bad. It's, it's, it's basically, it's like the mature way of asking or the responsible way of asking, should I do something, right? You're asking, how will it turn out? And then you can make your decision whether or not you're going to do it. So if you look in my book under all the card descriptions, you will find an advice section. And it'll say, as a con and as a pro as a pro okay so you will get ideas in there too even though this is not exactly an advice reading asking how something will turn out to make up your mind whether or not you're going to do it really is asking for advice is it not okay so look under that advice section okay now I did tell you I was going to show you what this is this is the dynamic spreads deck that's what these cards are okay if you are like wanting to practice a lot which is how I got so good with Lenormand just from practicing 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 you need lots and lots and lots of questions and you know I don't know how many friends you all have but I certainly didn't have enough to come up with enough questions so I used this now I actually bought this for writing this is a great way if you're a writer um, for developing storylines Okay, so it'll give you tons of ideas for developing storylines for, uh, for your writing. But you can see it's got a theme section and it has explore me, explore considerations, explore group interactions, explore actions, conclusions. There's, I don't know, there's time, timing cards in here, time frame cards. There's, there's all kinds of stuff in here. This, I think this is pretty expensive. I know you can find this online. Um, but you know, if you're a uh, if you're a Lenormand teacher, um, you may want to invest in this to come up with lots of, of questions for your students. Or if you're a writer, you know, you, you might want to invest in this too. Okay, that's it, my friends. I hope that was informative and fun and exciting and all that great stuff. Now go play with your cards. Bye.